Hey guys, uh, today I posted on Facebook and Instagram what color background I should paint for my next little chickadee paintings, uh, either muted aqua or muted pink, and overwhelmingly uh, people voted for the aqua color, which turned out to be super fun for me. I'm going to do that more often. I love having your input. It's helpful and it makes me feel more connected and a little bit closer to you. I'm also going to turn my camera around here and show you what I'm working on quick. Okay, what I've just finished working on is here on my uh, art table. Uh, Blossom is a 12 by 12 pig painting. Um, all these are an inch and a half deep. Pretty much all my paintings are an inch and a half thick. Bullseye the cow, which you've seen on social media. You also saw Blossom. And then I just put a gel gloss isolation layer on big guy here. And then in a day or two, depending on how humid my studio is, I'm going to put uh, satin varnish on him. And then what I was talking about, I'm going to paint two more chickadee paintings on these little four by four canvases. Um, I found a reference photo. I think it was on Pixabay. It might also have been on paint my photo. I zoomed in on it, cropped it, and then I drew on it so I can have a game plan of where I'm going to go. And then this is my aqua color, but I'm going to mute it down. So I'm super excited and thanks for the help. Okay, here's that uh, aqua color that I showed you. Normally I use heavy body acrylics. Um, they're more heavily pigmented. You can always thin them out a little bit. Uh, but I love this aqua color. And at the time I was at the store, I didn't see it in the heavy body. And then I'm going to try to um, mute it down with its comp, well, sort of its complement, not technically its complement. Um, it's a cadmium red medium. So let's see how that's gonna look. So we take a little, I'm gonna scoop this out of the way. Oh, and the tape is just to keep me um, in frame when I'm painting. Oh, I think that's gonna work pretty good. Which I don't know if you can see. I thought I'd just show you, I, sometimes I also uh, use a medium gray five just to mute, mute a color down. Um, it really doesn't matter. I know some artists think you really should use the compliments to keep the color more true, but these acry acrylics are amazing. Um, I personally think you can do it either way. But can you kind of see how that's a little grayer? And I wanna, I'm mixing quite a bit because uh, I'm gonna paint two of these chickadees with this color background. A little more, I didn't need much red. Okay, I'm going to sharpen a watercolor pencil here and then um, sketch on my chickadee. See if I can do this. The camera's kind of, or the, my phone, which is my camera, is kind of in the way of me looking down at the canvas. So I'll just kind of take a stab at it. I probably won't talk too much because I'm going to think. All right, we want this guy kind of, I only want his head kind of there. I'm thinking, guys, I want him chubbier. Actually, how do you know if a chickadee is a boy or a girl, male or female? If you know, put the answer in the comments or I'll, hopefully I'll remember to Google it later. And I think I might shorten up his feet a bit. His head seems kind of small here. I need to 
covering them up a little, which is easy enough to do. Sorry about the wiggle. I've got um, sort of a bendable arm holding my phone. changing my mind about how to do his feet. Actually, they'd be closer together, wouldn't they? Even though I made him chubbier. I can't really see his other foot, so we're gonna make it up. I'm gonna spread his toes a little bit. That's one thing nice is if when you paint, um, I like using a reference photo even if I've painted a bunch of chickadees or a bunch of anything because you kind of get to know. I think that's looking pretty good. Also let me know if you like seeing, to me it's not that exciting to watch me draw because really I'm just kind of mapping out. I may have to stop because I can't see through my camera, but I'm just kind of mapping out um, I'm gonna add a little black here. I wanna put a reminder. Indicate some wings. I'm trying to see his um, beak. I think we see a little bit of the underside. Actually got just a slight smile. And then it kind of comes in this way, and then it kind of goes that way, and then it comes back. I made it a little chubbier, but I think I might like that. And then it's got a little bit of a dip where his eye goes. I can always make his head taller. Just kind of seeing how this looks, and then this kind of comes. straight down and stops. Because you know what the nice thing too, I've said this before in my other videos, um, nature isn't exact, so you can, um, you can change things, you can get them close. Uh, when I paint this, I'm just kind of gonna show you parts. But I thought maybe for a change I'd show you more of the beginning. Like um, in my pig video, I showed you how I um, spray canvases and get them to tighten up so they sound like a drum. You spray the back of them. I did that with these two. You spray the back of them with water. Uh, you can use a hair dryer. It's kind of got... Well, it's looking kind of cute. And just kind of suggest it so I don't forget when I'm painting. And then this watercolor pencil will just um, basically melt. This one doesn't melt, but um, you can see where I smeared it with my finger a little bit. It'll melt right into the paint. Well, let me change this a little bit. Kind of a point back at him or her. We gotta find out. I have a blood there. Don't really have room for a flower here. Not to make that smaller. Maybe put a flower here. All right, guys. I think I'm gonna turn off the camera so I can look at this better. Be right back. Okay. I uh, didn't draw much more. I ended up. Deciding to put a tail on him because I got it a little higher than I wanted on the canvas, even though I measured out, you saw me measure out the tree branch. 
And then I changed the flowers a little bit. I just wanted to show you what I ended up with. Oh, and then I'll carry some hints of flowers and the tree branch over onto the sides. I almost forgot, we gotta write love on the canvas. Um, even though you're right here or here, I think we should write it right on his tummy. I'm gonna turn it a little bit. Okay, cool. I have painted most of the background, but I wanted to paint a little on camera. Um, most of the time I paint the whole background and then put the image on top. I thought I'd try this like I do with some of the bigger paintings I do. I also might change it, lighten it after I uh, start painting the chickadee. I painted over his tail a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Oh, and I think I want to, oh, there's my cat meowing. <laughs> I think I want to, like I painted a little too far in, I need to paint out white a little bit there. Oops, here I should get my um, palette and camera. I don't think you can hear my computer. I've got a uh, local TV station running on my computer because we're having some thunderstorms. And I want to know if they turn into something more than just a thunderstorm. Just, I was just thinking about leaves when I drew that. Alright, so there's not a whole lot to paint in the background, just keeping my corners darker, um, even though I still may adjust it as I go along, maybe keeping the sides darker here. So it focuses in onto the chickadee. So I couldn't decide if I like the background. <laughs> so I uh, just decided to stop. I can always lighten it or darken it or smooth it. I just couldn't decide if I liked it. Sometimes it helps when you get the, the bird on there. You can see better what you're doing, what the values are looking like. Uh, I put a little portrait, light portrait pink. And I think that is burnt, oh, that is burnt sienna on there and then Mars Black. Um, I could mix a black, but it's just quicker to use the, black, the Mars Black. I'm gonna mix the grays though. I'm gonna have the light come, I think, from this direction. come back and darken it. We just had a really good thunderstorm, which means it'll wash. If you've been watching my videos, I also do, uh, I chalk my driveway. And so it should should wash the last couple off, which is sad, but it's also good because I have more space to to chalk on. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do this week, but I'm gonna chalk. I should ask you guys. Um, I did a poll for the background of this one. That was really fun and super helpful, which I mentioned earlier in this video. I need to remember to do that more often. I don't know if it looks funny because I'm kind of looking around my phone that's filming this to see where I'm painting. I might need a smaller brush. I 
So I've mentioned this before, but brush stroke matters. Uh, brush stroke direction matters. Um, I do a lot of, like, I, like, I do a lot of, I should do some more. I've done some landscapes, but I do a lot of, I like painting animals. I like zooming in on them, like when I showed you the bullseye, the cow eye. Like, that's super fun. Really make that eyeball come to life. Alrighty, I'm really looking around the camera, so I think I'm gonna stop so I can paint. And then I'll show you, um, I'll come back in a little bit when I get a little further. Hey guys, I ended up painting the eye off camera because I couldn't get in here and really see what I was doing. I wanted to hold the painting. Um, it's not done, but I put some blue in it and I have some values in it so I can see how dark to make it around the rest of the eye. And oh, and I also put the beak in. But then I noticed I've lost sort of the back of his head. I might wanna, this isn't quite white. It's, um, it's the teal with a lot of white. It's close. Yeah, I think that's a little better. I'm trying to figure out where he's going to go. Plus, I'm going to put some of this uh, color in his feathers anyway to tie it into the background. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. That's a decent shape, don't we think? I don't know if you notice how that love just, the part of that E just disappeared right into the paint. I might put his feet in, which I may do off camera again. So I've got my um, phone closer so you can see this little guy better, but then it's in my way when I look down. I'll have to get some fancy camera equipment. So when I do paint the feet, I'll just pretty much paint it um, one color with a line and then come back with little dabs of color to get the um, a little bit of detail on it. And then I probably have to go back and repaint it again because there's so little and I'm gonna end up going over them when I make the branch. That's taken shape. Be back. I decided to paint the bird, um, the chickadee with more blues. I added a little, uh, this is Thalo Blue Green Shade and then I mixed it with some of my muted aqua because I'm gonna come back with white and make different areas pop. Give them a little more depth, but give them also make them look a little more round. And then I put a little more of the Prussian blue um, and a little less of the muted aqua combination in the tail here and here. And then I'm going to put a whole, probably a whole other layer on this, but I'm just getting color down, seeing if I'm liking how it's starting to uh, unify the painting by using the blues and the aquas in the bird. And then I'm going to, I was going to paint the branch. Um, this is burnt sienna. And I'll probably, oh here sir, I keep moving it back and forth. If I mix it with black, it makes it a little more brown so I can get, I'm not sure if I want this rusty color. It might be too warm with all this cool I've got going on. But I'm also gonna use the um, portrait pink and the burnt sienna for the flowers. So I might have to put some of those in to figure out how it's looking, the color combinations. But overall, this is a very cool painting. Not as in neat, but as in cool colors. <laughs> Okay, so let's put in, can you see that? I'm gonna mix a darker brown. That's pretty dark. Let me grab a little um, unbleached titanium there. Okay, and then I'm probably gonna turn it because my light's coming from this direction. 
I'm gonna want all these. Ooh, that's pretty blobby. I wonder if I'm gonna need a little smaller brush. I don't know, I think this will work. I might not be able to get between the toes, but that's okay. So I'm kind of, it's a pretty small branch, but I'm kind of pulling in a C shape. I don't know if you can see that. I'm oh, sorry, that was off camera, I think. Let's try it again. It doesn't have to be perfect. So that's basically how you make a branch. Then you just add some, maybe some darks, and then you come back. Okay, let me get this corner. And then you come back the other direction with some lighter colors, and it'll look like a branch. Okay, I've been painting, and then I, I get into it and I forget to video. But um, I'm using the uh, Burt Sienna and the Portrait Pink, and I put a little here on the warm side or the light side of the chickadee, and then I end up putting some in the uh, branch. I need to lighten up the, the claws. I also need to lighten up the top of the branch, have some more highlights on it, but I think it's starting to come together. I wanted to stop and show you before I forget to video again. So basically what I do is I just kind of rough things in and then see how I like it and then try to tie them in with a color. So I thought it was also kind of funny. I end up, so when I asked you guys on uh, Facebook and Instagram if I should do a uh, muted aqua or a muted pink background, I pretty much am using both those colors now. I must have it on the brain. Just adding like little. So even though I'm I'm painting this more impressionistic sort of brush strokey looser, you can st see I still get kind of fussy with it. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. Alrighty, I'll come back when I get a little further along. So what I'm trying to do here, I've got like little spots, I've got brush strokes. Maybe I'll see if I can, yeah, I'm not sure. I think I need want to put some more black or dark brown in there. Um, I'm sort of trying to entertain you and keep everything sort of moving around the bird like this flower points to the face. And then here I was gonna start maybe adding some, uh, I, I could be done here pretty quick. I'm really starting to like it. So I was thinking about adding, I don't know if that's gonna be light enough. Just adding some fun flips. Oh, you know what I wanted to do? I'm forgetting. I'm gonna have to let that dry. I wanted to add, even though my reference photo doesn't really have it. I'm going to add some black and then put some flips over it so it's almost like there's a little hint of the wing. I'm going to grab some straight up black here. Can you, yeah, you guys can see that. Cool. All right, so what I might do is let that dry a little bit and come right back and do the flips. Because if I paint over it, right now it's going to smear and I think I want it to sit. This little chickadee is really taking shape. Um, I could maybe leave it as it is. But I want to put some, I've got a little white on the beak there. I want to put some pops of white in there and see how I like it. See how much I want to lighten up the shading. But um, it's really kind of neat color com combinations. I'm getting excited about it because it's starting to come together. All right, so we're gonna take, this isn't, this is kind of a really light muted teal. And I started to do this and I realized I wanted the black in there. There's gonna be a little light that bounces back.
Oh, and I need to remember to lighten up the feet. It's too bad you guys aren't on here with me live. I should try and do that sometime. So you can like put it on the feet, lighten up the feet. <laughs> Remind me, let's try some white here. I'm just cleaning my brush out. You can see it's kind of stained with that aqua color, which isn't really a problem. It just happens sometimes. I'll make sure I don't have any water on there. All right, so we definitely want right there. We definitely want. Alright, I think I'm going to play with this a little more and then come back because I don't know how long this video is getting. Talk to you soon. What do you guys think? I really, I think white is my favorite color, which maybe, oh, sorry about the noise there. Maybe sounds funny, but it just really, um, just brings things to life. I'm going to mess a little bit with lightening up. Sorry, you always tell when I start to think because I don't talk. Lightening up the, especially this one, because as I said, the light's kind of coming from this direction. Actually, maybe we'll put a little. This brush is getting pretty worn out. You can't see it, but it's pretty, pretty fuzzy and frayed on the end. We don't have to define every little bit of that claw. I just kind of want to make it stand out a little better. Oh, well, maybe we need a little. It's kind of dirty up some white here. I'm really not seeing any difference. I think I'm done. I'm going to sign it and say goodbye, you guys. Thanks for watching. Well, hang on a second. I'll thank you in a sec. Okay, I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit there. So I signed it, and I remembered I had a question. So since I paint, these, this is just a little 4 inch by 4 inch uh, painting. It's not that big. And then, so I just, on all my paintings, I put my artist mark on the front, which is a for Annie and a T for Tro, and then there's two dots, one for favorite son and one for favorite daughter. And then I'll sign the back once it's dry enough after I varnish it. Okay, now it's time to say goodbye. Thank you, thank you for watching. I love connecting with you guys. It really makes my day to read your comments, um, get your suggestions. Oh, I'm here. I could turn a little, see a little artwork on my wall there. Oh, and there's my easel when I paint larger paintings. Uh, we need to do virtual art hugs. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and we'll hang out soon. Bye.